Remain standing as I read our scripture today, coming from 2 Kings, the fourth chapter. I'm going to start at the verse 8 and read down to verse 17, and I'm reading from the New King James. It says, now it happened one day that Elisha went to Shunem, some people say Shunem, where there was a notable woman, and she persuaded him to eat some food. So it was as often as he passed by, he would turn in there to eat some food. And she said to her husband, look now, I know that this is a holy man of God who passes by us regularly. Please let us make a small upper room on the wall and let us put a bed for him there and a table and a chair and a lampstand. So it will be whenever he comes to us, he can turn in there. And it happened one day that he was there and he turned into the upper room and lay down there. Then he said to Gehazi, his servant, call this Shunammite woman. When he had called her, she stood before him, and he said to her, say now to her, look, you have been concerned for us with all this care. What can I do for you? Do you want me to speak on your behalf to the king or to a commander of the army? And she answered, I dwell among my own people. So she said, so he said, what? then is to be done for her. And Gehazi answered, actually, she has no son, and her husband is old. So he said, call her. And when he had called her, she stood in the doorway. Then he said, about this time next year, you shall embrace a son. And she said to him, no, my Lord, man of God, do not lie to your maidservant. Some people think Shunna meant she has some color in her. So I imagine when she said this, her finger went up. <laughs> now, man, don't lie to me. I didn't ask for no child. Don't be playing with me like that. No, my Lord, man of God, do not lie to your man's maidservant. But the, but the woman conceived and bore a son when the appointed time had come of which Elisha had told her. On your way down to your seat, look at least two people and tell them, it's your turn to be blessed. It's your turn. It's your turn. <laughs> the Lord woke me up in the middle of the night and gave me this word and spoke to me in a still small voice and said, tell my people, it's their turn to be blessed. I can shout right now. It's your turn to be blessed. This phrase, is your turn, means that it's now someone else's opportunity or responsibility to do something after someone has already done their part or completed their turn. And the Lord told me to tell y'all that this is a season that he's going to bless people who have been a blessing. This is a season he's going to bless people who have been a blessing. So if you if you just one selfish person who's never done anything for anybody, who's stingy, who, who, who trying to get all you can, hide the can, sit on the can, my name is Jimmy. I take all you give me. You can leave right now. This message ain't even for you. Don't have nothing for you this morning. But this message is for people who have blessed other people. This message is for people who have consistently given and supported ministry and helped other people when you needed help for yourself. This message is for people who were outwardly focused when nobody was inwardly focused towards you. The context of the scripture is, Elisha doesn't say he knew this woman, had any relation with woman, but he would come down to this nearby village in the southern part of Israel, known as Shunem. And he would come down there, and this woman, knowing that he was a man of God, she said, I'm just going to, I just want to, give the man of God a meal to eat. So after he preached on Sunday, well, they were Jewish on Saturday. 
he can have some fried chicken, some collard greens, and some macaroni and cheese. Because you don't give a preacher quiche on Sunday. That's what I'll let y'all know. You don't give a preacher spaghetti on Sunday. Not on Sunday. We can do that some other day. She was just being kind to him. And so he would regularly eat. They didn't have to worry about where he was going to eat, whether a restaurant was going to be open, who's going to feed him. She would, he would understood he's going to eat there. And most likely he ate very well because she was a notable woman. She was a rich woman. She had means. So she wasn't struggling to feed herself or her husband. And so she would regularly do this, but one day as a result of relationship, everybody say relationship. You know, when I talk about honor, first I talk about the first principle of honor is because there's a principle of honor. God said honor those in authority. Then, then uh, it's the principle. But then it gets to a point as you go higher or deeper, however you want to look at it, with honor, you don't just honor the principle or the, or the position. You start honoring the person. For this woman, it went beyond the principle. It went beyond the position, and it became personal to her. So as a result of being around him and knowing him, she started saying, I perceive this is a holy man of God as a result, as a result of spending time with him. You know, this week, this week uh, some, some, some of you saw we, we do what's called a B-roll. You know, sometimes uh, media are showing me arriving and more. Well, boy, I, boy, I had more hate on social media this week than ever. Look, they want to know why a preacher driving a Mercedes. I'm like, you don't know me. Uh, they, so they got upset because the Keisha held the door. Okay? Why a woman holding the door? The brothers were getting to uh, People saying all kinds of stuff. Okay? Um, and uh, somebody said, preacher sure look clean. How many, how many times he tricked people out of for that? People, you know, people on social media, and some of y'all get moved by that. And I, I almost got moved myself. And then I said, these folks don't know me. They don't, I have nothing to prove to them, okay? And so, because it's not personal for them. Those of you who know me and know my story and know my life, and I've personally been a blessing to you, you don't have a problem with me being blessed. It's like somebody telling you your father or your mother don't deserve you to buy them a nice bag. Why would you spend that much money? That's my mama. How you going to tell me what I should give my mama? And so for you, it becomes personal. For this woman, it had become personal. She said, this is a holy man of God. I don't just want to give him a, 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 a meal. I want to also give him lodging. And not, I, I, don't just want to, I don't just want him to sleep on the couch or the pull-out couch or go let him on to sleep on a, on a blow-up mattress. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about here. Okay? And, and throw him an extra blanket. No, let's add a room onto the house. This is a major investment for a man who she's come to know and to respect. This is a major financial contribution she's making because she didn't need any more room in the house. She didn't have any children. Wasn't going to be, have, wasn't going to be having any children. She did this for the man of God. And, and he's eating regularly and he's in this nice room with a, with a bed and a desk and a lamp where he can study and pray. And one day he's sitting there and God starts dealing with him. He said, call this woman. I want to do something for her. And he says to her, he says, uh, you have been, you have, look, you have been concerned or shown care for us. You've done all this for us. What can I do for you? In other words, he told this woman, you have been blessing me, but now it's your turn. <laughs> it's your turn to be blessed. So let me move on and tell you, the first reason why it's your turn to be blessed is because God is a God of reciprocity. I spoke about that a couple weeks ago. I made up my mind. I'm not being used anymore this season in my life. Okay? Some of you, you need to get there. It's, I heard Oprah say it long before I got there. She said something about being 60. But you don't care what other people got to say, and you ain't got nothing to prove. It is what it is, and I am who I am. And if you don't know me by now, you will never, never, never know me. Ooh, y'all don't even know Amazing Grace, but you know that. 
So, you know, you, 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 had, a, you had a place. And, and so I just made up my mind, I'm just not going to be used by people anymore. Okay? There, there are people, come on, there are people who you go above and beyond for because you know they go above and beyond for you. There's people you will inconvenience. Your, the, the, one, one of the reasons why I took a trip recently to Virginia to, to, uh, w to, to uh, go and, and uh, at my own expense, okay, J just to go and spend time with a, with a pastor who was having his first con convocation for his fellowship is because he had just come here to enjoy with us at our dedication, at his expense. Are, are you listening to me? I said, so this is a way now I can reciprocate. And he knows me and Pastor Baker, a friend that happened to be Pastor Baker, was, was preaching that night. He said, that he said, Bailey, I know you're just here because Baker's here. I said, no, no, I came to support you, okay? It was my opportunity to reciprocate. I, it's, it's just something wrong to always take and never want to reciprocate. Those are suckers. Those are parasites. Those are users who just try to live off other people. And, but now somebody got to start this. Somebody got to start giving, but it shouldn't, you shouldn't have to continually give without receiving something in return. Now, they may not be able to do some, the same thing for you, but they can do something. Come on, you can't pay for the meal, but can you contribute to the tip? Come on, do something. You know, uh, I, 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 I know you can't ever pay, but, but do I have to pay for your meal and always be your counselor too and let, and let you just dump on me? Can't you, don't you have a joke? Can I just get a laugh from you? I got to pay for your food and then be burdened down with all your problems. And then if I try to say something about something I'm going through, you say, well, let me tell you about this about me. I get nothing from this relationship and you just sucking the life out of me. I, not that I have any experience with that or anything. <laughs> but God is a God of reciprocity. That's why Elisha, after she had done so much for him over this period of time, he said, what can I do for you? God will not allow you to do for him. God will not allow you to do for the church. God will not allow you to do for his people without paying you back. Let me say it again. God will not allow you to do for his church, his people, without paying you back. I grew up hearing a song, you can't beat God giving no matter how you try. The more you give, the more he gives to you. Hebrews 6 and 10, we've heard it many times. God is not unjust to forget your work and your labor of love which you have shown towards his name. How do you show it towards his name? By blessing him by blessing his church and blessing his people, which you have shown towards his name. How, how, how have you shown uh, love and labor towards his name? In that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. Remember Jesus said, whatever you do to the least of these, you do to me. He said, when, he said uh, he's going to say to some people, he said, depart from me, I never knew you because when I was in prison, you didn't come visit me. When I was hungry, you didn't feed me. When I was sick, you didn't even pray for me. And they're going to say, Lord, well, when did we see you hungry? When were you in prison? He said, no, and as much as you have not done it for anybody else, you haven't done it for me. For what you, what you do unto them, you do it unto me. So God's a reciprocity. So God is not unjust to forget. That tells me it is unjust. Or as the King James says, it's unrighteous to let people do for you and then forget what, they've ever, what you've ever done for them. I was thinking today as I was listening to the Perry speak this morning, and some of y'all, I'm, I'm, I'm being transparent, and I'm about to be real vulnerable. The first person who I call my spiritual son, the first person who I call my spiritual son, there are people in this church when they came to, to want to meet with me, when, he, when they first came here, I said, no, you got to go through him. Well, I would, uh, what, what, talk to him, talk to him. The first person, and then th this person who I, I blessed, and I gave him a job, making my tapes, and I was paying him more money than the tapes was bringing in. When I would travel, I would take him with me. When he went out and went to go do some other things, I supported him, took up an offering for him, gave him a check. A Couple of months later, I was calling him to do something. He wouldn't take my call. And he, and I kept trying to, I told my sister, well, try to get him on the phone. He wouldn't take my call. And finally, somebody got through. He said, uh, he said, I won't be 
uh, tell Pastor Betty I won't be coming, and um, I'm getting connected with somebody else. And I never understood all that. So finally, I kept calling, called, took my call, and uh, I said, well, man, what's up? He said, well, I heard there were people talking about me. I said, did you ever hear I said anything about you? He said, no. I said, well, that's, that's what should matter. As we went on, and then he was, this person was staying connected with other people in the church and even on the staff, but wouldn't talk to me. And I said, well, how are you going to stay connected to them and not talk to me? I said, well, I said, what was our relationship? And I'll never forget, it still hurts me now. He said, it was employer, employee. Employer, I said, okay, thank you. And that was my last ever serious conversation with the person. And so y'all need to understand, I've been hurt. Seriously. And I, I ain't bleeding on you. Don't worry. I, I tell people, don't be bleeding all over people. People ain't here for that. Heal yourself up and go to preach the word. And we got time for you to bleed all over them. They bleeding already. Okay? But what I realized by that, so when people call me their spiritual father now, because he did too one time. Uh, I heard that before. Pop, mm -hmm. the main person called me Pop, I hardly ever see him. Oh, y'all, don't y'all get mad at me, because I'm, I'm telling y'all the truth. Okay? Because I'm thinking we are doing life together. And there are things I do, now y'all need to understand, there's some things I do because it's reciprocity. I bought cars for people. Everybody need a car. I ain't, a, I ain't, in a, I ain't just in the benevolence of giving cars away. I give them cars away because I thought of reciprocity. You've done for me. You've been faithful. So, I, you know, this is the need you have. I don't give you a buy you a car so you can go drive it down the street for Reverend Flapjack Church. Leave the keys in the car. Let me give it to somebody else who's still doing life with me. I just believe in this principle of reciprocity. And so, but, and so the Bible says it is unrighteous to forget people have done for you. Every day I wake up thinking, y'all have heard about the nuns. And, and, I, and, I, and I, I realized after I came back, uh, I should have went even tried to do something while I was in Georgia City. The nuns who put me through school, they're in their 80s now, in the mid-80s. They're no longer in the convent. But one of my classmates sent me a news clip from the news on their street, the houses had burned down. And they showed her, uh, the one, one of them outside saying that they had a whole bunch of dogs and cats. Whenever we went to see them, you all know they had a bunch of dogs and cats. A bunch of dogs and cats. A whole bunch of dogs and cats. You all know how people have all these dogs and cats and stuff. They wouldn't even let me in. They would come out and we would stand out on the porch and talk to them. Because they have so many dogs and cats. But on the news, they were saying, well, I hope, we hope our pets got out. I think the cats got out, but the house burned down. And I can't help but always think about them. And so I, I tried to call. You know, they're older, so they don't have cell phones. Every time I try to call, I can't get through because I don't know if they're in the house. I don't know if the convent that they were part of took them, took them in. I don't know. But I think about them all the time. And anything I could do for them, I would do it. Be, even though, watch this, even though I'm 40, 50 years removed from when they did it to me and did it for me. Come on now. But I realized I would not be who I am. I would not be standing here if it wasn't for those nuns who ran a thrift shop to pay for my private school education. God is not unrighteous to forget. People forget. People get offended. I, I mean, even if you get offended, Come on, sometimes you got to reel it in and say, well, I'm separated now, but I'm so grateful that, and I will forever be grateful, and anything I could, come on, now you all understand what I'm saying? God says, unrighteous to forget. Hebrews 6 and 10, New Living Translation said, it said, God is not unjust. He will not forget how hard you've worked for him and how you've shown your love to him by caring for other believers, and you still do. I quoted early Ephesians 6 and 8. It says, what, because God's a God of reciprocity, whatever good anyone does, he will receive the same from the Lord, whether he's slave or free. 
Now, I, I grew up in the church that always says something about it don't matter what good things you do. If you want to receive Jesus as your Savior, you're going to hell. And that's, I still believe that, that that's true. But can I tell you, God rewards good deeds in the earth. It don't guarantee you a place in heaven, but I can show you in the scripture, God rewards good deeds in the earth. The Bible says whatever good anyone does, he's going to receive from the Lord. God's going to reciprocate. That verse from the message translation says, good work will get you good pay from the master. How many of y'all want good pay? Come on, how many of y'all want good pay? Look at them. Good work will get you good pay from the master. Regardless of whether you're a slave or regardless of whether you're free. God, God said, no matter what your situation is, God will reward you and pay you when it's your time and your turn to be blessed. Proverbs eleven twenty five, 25, it reminds us, the liberal soul, that doesn't mean progressive Democrat. Don't, that's me, I'm a liberal. That ain't what that means, brother. That, that's fine. Okay? Okay. The liberal soul here means the generous person will be made fat or will increase. Here we go. And he that what? Watereth shall be watered also himself. He that refreshes others is uh, what the New Living Translation says, he himself will be refreshed. Because God is a God of reciprocity. And now, and now, ultimately, you have to realize reciprocity comes from God. Because there are people who will do the things that I've talked about that you shouldn't do. But whatever you've done in the name of the Lord, God will repay. And you have to understand this. I had to be reminded of this, that you reap what you sow, not always where you sow. Let me say it again. You reap what you sow, not, only where, not always where you sow. I told y'all, the company that relocated me here to South Carolina, man, in one year, they were so thrilled with me. They were excited about me. They promoted me, increased me, put me on management track. I had been with the other company, the, the prior company I had been with for four or five years. And then it got to the point where I had a manager who was just trying to find something wrong with everything that I did and was trying to derail me. So then I went to this other company doing the same thing and what, what they criticized, the other one rewarded. Because you reap what you sow, not, only, not always where you sow. That verse from New Living Translation, Proverbs eleven twenty five. 25, if you refresh others, you're going to be refreshed yourself. So God has promised to pay back and reciprocate to those who have sacrificed for him and for the kingdom of God. We are in this new sanctuary because there are people who sacrificed for us to be here. There are people who said, well, I'll get my new car later because right now I've committed $300 a month to the building fund, okay? I've committed, so, so I will do that later. I, I will put this off because right now I'm, I'm partnering with my pastor and partnering with my church and partnering with ministry to make a vision come to pass. And you think God's unrighteous to forget that? He is not unrighteous. He promised to pay back, reciprocate those who sacrificed for him and for the kingdom of God. In Genesis 22, that's the story of God telling Abraham, bring your only son Isaac up to the mountain and sacrifice him there. And after he showed a willingness to sacrifice him, and God now allowed him to see the provision that was, watch it, the provision that was in the place of obedience. You always have to remember that. The, the ram did not appear abracadabra. It was there all the time. That's why God said, you to come sacrifice at the place that I tell you of. Some of y'all still missed it. The provision... It wasn't autumn. It didn't just show up. It was there at the place of the sacrifice. See, uh, God already has your provision, but you got to act in obedience and do what he tells you to do. Then it'll be seen. It will be hidden from you until you release it. It won't be released to you until you release it. And so after he was willing to sacrifice his son, and God said, no, go sacrifice that ram that's stuck, that stuck in the thicket there. God says to him in Genesis 22, 16 and 17, God said, by myself I have sworn. No, people say, I swear, I swear. But some people say, I swear to God. We, we know we shouldn't swear, right? Uh, I swear in my mother's grave. 
I swear on whatever, on something that they, that they value, that they cherish, that they highly esteem. And God, God, went to, God got ready to swear and said, I swear by, uh, the, I swear by myself. Because you could find nobody greater to swear by. Are y'all catching it? I swear by my own name. Same the, says the Lord, because you have done this thing, have not withheld, because you've sacrificed, have not withheld your only son, here's what I'm going to do for you. It's your turn to be blessed. In blessing, I'm going to bless you. In multiplying, I'm going to multiply you. And your descendants and as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is on the seashore, and your descendants shall possess the gates of their enemies. God said, I'm going to bless you enough that your children's children, they're going to know I blessed you. Oh, come y'all. Some of you catch that. God wants you to be so blessed. Your children, children going to know that God. Your, your children, children, your grandchildren, great-grandchildren should be able to look back and say, well, you know, my great-grandmother, if Jesus spares is coming, they remember this church named Right Direction Church International, and they got hooked up with this church, and they started giving, and they started tithing, and we didn't have nothing. My, 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 head, my father, my grandfather said, but every time, if we, ever since we got there and started blessing and giving, man, things just got released in our lives, and, and and, and we kept hearing about being a millionaire. We never heard about being a millionaire, but God made them millionaires. And now we're living in the blessing. Oh, my God, my God. It's your turn to be blessed. Tell your neighbor again. It says, your turn to be blessed. In Luke 18, 29 and 30, Jesus talks about those who sacrifice again for ministry. Remember, it's all through the scriptures. He blesses people who get connected to ministry. I'm talking about God's system. I'm not talking about man's system. I'm not talking about the stock market right now. I'm not talking about Bitcoin. By the way, y'all, if you, if, you if you looked on Secure Give, you can give through crypto now. Those you involved in crypto, put some in some good soil. Okay? If, those you involved in crypto, you can give the right direction through, through crypto now. But Jesus says, in my system, anybody... Verse Luke 18, 29. Assuredly, I say to you, there is no one who has left house or parents or brothers or wife or children. Some of y'all had to leave them at Slippy Rock. Y'all don't. Some of y'all had to leave them at Sinking Sand Church and do what God t- And they don't understand. And they're talking about you. And you know, they all, they down there know at that, uh, at that direction church. You, you know that, that, with the preacher from New Jersey. You know he ain't even from here. <laughs> he ain't even from here. Like that's supposed to disqualify me. Like I'm an alien or something. You know he a Martian. But there's some of you we have to make choices because what God said to you about your life and like Pastor Marshall and I had to do with denominational churches and that we were, came along and, and with our family members who didn't even understand who had to leave houses or parents or brothers or wife or children for the sake of the kingdom. For, for what? For the sake of the kingdom. He said that no one who's done this who shall not receive many times more in this present time. I'm so glad it added that because there's some people so spiritual who think you got to wait to get to heaven for everything. God said he's going to bless you in this present time. Look at someone say, the Lord is going to bless me right now. Hunt somebody say, it's your turn right now. <laughs> Hallelujah. He said he's going to bless you many times more in this present time and watch it. And you still get a chance to go to heaven too. And in the age to come, eternal life. So God said, I got enough to bless you right now and bless you later too. I'm going to give you the cake and then I'm going to give you the icing and the cherry on top of the cake. God said, I got enough to bless all of you. You don't have to be jealous of anybody. You don't have to hate on anybody. You don't have to throw water on anybody's flame like Coco Golf said because when you try to throw water on it, you just throwing gas and now we here blazing. You don't have to hate on anybody. God said, I'll bless you if you sacrifice many times more. That verse from New Living Translation, Luke 18 and 30, it says, you will be repaid many times over in this life. Oh, my God. 
Hallelujah. I can tell you God has paid me many times over. When we took that $5,000 that, that we, all the money we had accumulated, all the only savings we had left over from our 401k, I mean, really, do you still call a $5,000 401k or is that more like a, a 101z? But we took that and sacrificed that into ministry to start this church when we were full-time, and the Lord told me to do nothing else, when we were full-time in ministry with 40 people. And Pastor Marcia cried about it at first. And I showed her, baby, this is what the Lord told us to do with that money. But God spoke to her and said, you won't miss it because I'm going to repay you double. Are you listening to me? And the Bible tells us in Psalm 126, those who sow in tears will reap in joy. Okay, if, 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 if every time you've sown, you've always been happy about it, you, you haven't really given yet. Because God, God can tell you to give, and you'd be like, God, this better be you. This better be you, Lord. This is all I got, Jesus. And I'm going to obey you, God. You got to come through for me. You got to be like that woman. Don't be lying to me, man of God. It's my last $58. <laughs> God said, you'll be repaid. I'm a living witness. God can repay you many times over. Just that people don't understand it. And watch it. I realize that. And I showed you that in the scripture. It's, it's in, it's in uh, when God blessed uh, Jacob, he blessed him in a way that nobody thought he could be blessed. Through the rejected sheep, through the speckled calf, through, the, through, through, through striped animals that everybody thought was the, was the rejects. And God increased him and blessed him so much that his brother-in-law said, he has stolen my father's wealth. I know it don't sound good, but you ain't really blessed the way God wants you to be blessed, to look like you stole something. Oh, come on now. God can bless you so much, it look like you stole something. Ain't no way. We could be working here at the same job. I've been working here longer than them and look like they got more than me. I just, it just, it just don't look right to me. It look like they stole something. God going to bless you so much, they going to think you stole something. But it's the blessing of the Lord. It maketh rich. It maketh rich. It maketh rich. So don't get mad when people talk about you because it comes with the blessing. Because in that same script from Luke 18, he said, now, I'm going to bless you many times over. He said, but it's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to come with persecution because people don't like it when you're blessed like that. So though you may, though you may not give merely to get, and we hear that, you shouldn't give merely to get. I don't just give to get. Though you may not give to merely get, God will not allow you to give without getting. God will not allow you to give without getting. The Shunammite woman gave to and cared for Elisha just because she wanted to be a blessing to him as a man of God. She gave to him and was kind to him, expecting nothing in return. But we know from New Testament scripture what she was actually doing. Galatians 6 said, when you sow to the flesh, you'll reap from the flesh. But when you sow to the spirit, you receive life everlasting. She, without her even know, she was sowing into the spirit, which was sowing into the grace, sowing into the anointing that was on his life. She was not expecting, she, she didn't tell her husband, no, nah, no, nah, just, just maybe. Maybe we just give this man a few meals, and maybe if we build a room on the house, maybe he'll speak a prophetic word over us, and maybe we'll have a child. She had no agenda other than to be a blessing. Oh, come on now. <laughs> there are people who give with agendas, and there's people who say, listen, I'm just doing what the Lord tell me to do. I don't know how God going to bless me or if he going to bless me, but I just i am going to be faithful to do what I'm supposed to do. I don't even know why I'm doing it. I'm just releasing what God told me to release. I'm helping where God told me to help. I'm suppositing where the God told me to deposit. I'm, I'm assisting where God told me to assist. I'm just going to leave the rest to God. She gave expecting nothing in return. And even when Elisha asked her, we know that's proof, because Elisha calls her up. He, he said, call the woman up. 
ask the woman, you've done this for us, what can we do for you? And her response was, I'm good. <laughs> Let me buy you some lunch, I'm good. Need a car, I'm good. Need a house, I'm good. Her response was, I'm good. He said, well, shit, wait, 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 wait. You know, I know the king. You know, I'm politically connected. You need me to talk to king first? She said, I'm good. I'm talking, I don't have any issues. Do you need me to talk to the general of the army? Oh, he would say to her, do you need somebody bumped off? I can give them an offer they can't refuse. I mean, I mean, Elias was willing to be gangster for her. You need anybody mess with you? She said, I'm good. I don't need anything. So this is what the Lord told me to tell you. This is a season that God's going to bless people who feel like I'm good. Everybody ain't struggling. Everybody's not in lack. Everyone is not desperate. But God told me to tell you, this is a season he's going to bless people who feel like I'm good. He's going to bless you not because he needs it, you need it, but because he's good. He's going to bless you not because you ask for it, but because it's your turn to be blessed. Oh, Jesus. Look what Isaiah 30, 18 said. He said, therefore, the Lord will wait. The Lord will wait that he may be gracious to you. God will wait around just to be good to you. He will, the Lord will wait that he can be gracious to you. Therefore, he will be exalted. God says, this ain't about you. It's about me. <laughs> When I get finished blessing you, because it's your turn to be blessed, they're going to exalt my name. Folk going to say, there is a God. When I saw you in that place, and I saw you, and I said, when I saw, I said, there is a God. Folks going to see you and know that we was raised in the same place. We came from the same town. Your family was in a worse situation than I am, but look how God bless you. And they're going to say, there is a God. What church you go to? What scriptures are you standing on? What do you do to live the type of life you do? Somebody say, there is a God. He says he's going to do it that he can be exalted, that he may have mercy on you because God is a God of justice. God is a God of justice. God is a God of justice, which brings me to my second point. The reason why it's your turn, because God's a God of recompense. Everybody say recompense. Oh, my God, my God. Sometimes God will bless you just to get at somebody else. Yes. God's a God of recompense. Elisha felt it was necessary to do something to repay this Shunammite, whether you want it or not, whether you're looking for it or not. It's your time to be blessed because God is a God of recompense. To recompense, it means to pay what is owed or what is due. They have this thing, it's in every state. Y'all have heard before, last time I said this, people went looking and they found money. They got this thing called unclaimed money in every state has them, okay? You can look up and state, and it could be some money out there waiting for you, an aunt, a deceased relative, an uncle, an account you forgot about when you were living in another state, when you were stationed someplace else, forgot, and there's money out, and watch it, you're not missing it. Your life is going on, whether it's ten dollars or thousand dollars, but it's due you. Tell me, I'm catching this. Whether you claim it or not, it's due to you. you didn't tell me that. Whether you feel you're good or not, it's due to you. And God said, "I want you to have everything that's due to you." God wants to recompense, pay what is owed, what is due. To recompense, it means to compensate. It means to indemnify as a claim to justice. The reason why you give people uh, uh, after they've been injured, you know, take care of their car, that, and, and you, suppose, you, know, you take care of their car because they lost their car, you replace the car, they even give you a rental, you know, if somebody else damaged your car because your life has been inconvenienced for this. And now they're trying to make you whole to, to, to uh, you catch it, to, to really to be made whole, it means to make you look like this never happened to you. It means to compensate you for all your inconveniences. 
point I'm, I'm preaching myself tonight. It means to compensate you for all your inconveniences. I told y'all years ago when, when I was a claims adjuster, I, I had this, this, this old church gone to Christ mother, and I, she had fallen. We, we insured at that time, uh, 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 not, 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 not Dollar General, what's the other one? Family Dollar. We insured Family Dollar, and she had a slip and fall at Family Dollar store. And so I went by to see mother, and she said, well, I just want to make sure my medical bill's paid. Make sure my medical. I said, well, mother, get send me medical. And I went back, and I, I, was, a, I was a real claim just not the people who, who's sitting on the phone who, who just at home there, and they ain't really doing the job. And so, anyway, and so I, I had to carry the Aetna checkbook around, and I went to see mother. And uh, so she had all the medical bills. I said, well, even, the truth is, even if it had been paid by your insurance company, uh, you know, we, we, we will sit. And so I added up her medical, and so I gave her a check for her medical. She looked at it, she said, these are my medical bills. Now, she, all she told me, all she wanted was some medical bill taken care of. But somewhere between my first conversation with her and that conversation, I gave her one of her. She said, now what about my pains and my sufferings? I said, somebody got the mother. Can I tell you, God wants to compensate you for your pains and your sufferings. You should never have had to go through that. The devil should not have messed with you. He did not know he was messing with you. You are the apple of God's eye. You are the apple of God's eye. Do you realize you, you, you can't just take your finger and touch your eye because your eyelids automatically go into defense of your eye. You try to do that, your eye automatically blinks. God said, uh -uh, no, no, no. When you try to touch the apple of my eye, I will defend them. They are mine, says the Lord. And God said, I will compensate you for all you've been through and you got some stuff that's due to you and it's your turn to be blessed. Now, somebody else need to get blessed by this mess other than me. I know that God is a God of recompense, and when it's your turn, it's your turn, and the devil can't stop it, and the devil can't block it, and people don't have to like it, and people can talk about you, but when it's your turn to be blessed, you won't be blessed anyhow. Look at somebody say, it's my turn to be blessed. Say that I ain't finished, y'all. So to compensate means to indemnify, which means to make whole. To, you know, if, if, if you take, a, if you take a, a, a quarter of the pie, now you only got 75% of the pie. For that pie to be made whole, that quarter got to be put back. If, if you want the whole pie, half the pie was taken, then in order for that pie to be whole, half the pie has to be replaced. God wants you to be made whole. It means to, re re to repay, to compensate, watch this, recompense. It means to reimburse. Now, I have to stop right there because reimburse, to re you know, some, there, there are companies that will pay for your expenses in advance. They'll take care of things. They may give you a, company cr a credit card with But there's other people, you got to put it out yourself. You got to use your own credit card. Then you have to fill out an expense account and you can be reimbursed. So to be reimbursed means you had to put it out first. You had to pay for it first. There's some stuff that y'all have had to pay for you should not have had to pay for. So now that you paid for it out of your own pocket, God said, I'm about to reimburse you. <laughs> Look at somebody say, I'm about to be reimbursed. I'm about to be reimbursed. Recompense means to reimburse. It means to pay money to. Here's another one. Recompense, it means to make reparations. See, some of y'all mad at the government. Yeah, yeah. With all we've been through, they done reimburse the, 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 the Indians, the Native Americans, they done reimburse the Japanese, they, was in a, they done reimburse some Jews. Where's my reimbursement and where's my reparations? I, where's my, can I tell you, God said, listen, if they don't ever give it to you, I know everything you did. I know what your parents did. I know what your grandparents did. I know what your great grandparents did. And God said, I am a God who will give you recompense. I will God who will give you rep reparations. So stop waiting on reparations from the government because God is giving reparations right now. And it won't take an act of Congress. And it won't take a, a Democratic administration or Republican minister. When God gets ready to repay you, reimburse you, indemnify you, and to give you reparation, no devil in hell can stop it. Oh, Jesus. 
Hallelujah. I live the life I live right now because I got some reparations. Because God's got a recompense. You go as far as I can go here. Because God's got a recompense. The wealth of the sinners and the wicked people, the scripture says, I'm not making this up, eventually comes into the hands of righteous people. Because God's a God of recompense, the wealth of sinners and wicked people eventually comes into the hands of righteous people. Look at your neighbor and say, this ain't time to backslide. This ain't time to... No, of course. Not, 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 not when it's your time. No, 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 no. Stay out the club. Stay out the club. Get off the pole. Get off the pole. Put that, ah, put, put that drink down. Put that drink down. This ain't the time. Because, you, listen, God want to get something to you. He, he don't want to be taking it from you. God's got to recompense the wealth of the w- wicked and the sinners. You need to come to the hands of the righteous. Look at James, the fifth chapter. I'm searching sure from the New Testament. Some of you did this a review. And I'm reading the God's Word translation. It's your GW translation. God's Word. Uh, James, the fifth chapter, verse 1 through 6. It says, pay attention to this if you are rich. Now, this doesn't just mean all rich people. It's really talking about the wicked rich. Because it goes on to say what these rich people have done. He said, cry and moan about the misery that's coming to you. He said, your riches have decayed. Your clothes have been eaten by moths. Your gold and silver are corroded. And their corrosion will be used as evidence against you. Like fire, it will destroy your body. You have stored up riches in these last days. And the wages, you refuse to pay the people who harvested your fields. Let me read that again. The wages you refuse to pay the people who harvested your fields shout to God against you. God said, there's money crying saying, they ain't supposed to have me. God said, the wages that have been unjustly kept from people who were taken advantage of and trampled, God said, you don't even have to cry. The wages are saying, get me out of this bank account and to the, into the bank account of some righteous people. The wages are crying. The ways you refuse to pray, the people who harvest in your fields shout to God against you. The Lord of armies has heard the cries of those who gather the crops. You've lived in luxury and pleasure here on earth. You have fattened yourselves for the day of slaughter. You condemned and murdered. Come, this, is, this, is all, this, this is social injustice here. You've condemned and murdered people who have God's approval even though they didn't resist you. God said, "All that, you ought to be compensated for that. All that wealth is coming to the hands of righteous people. Look at somebody say, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Somebody need to shout, it's my turn to be blessed. Proverbs eleven thirty one. 31. Confirmation from the Old Testament. Behold, the righteous shall be recompensed where? In the earth. Much more the wicked and the sinner. Now, everybody knows that God, that God gonna pay that sinner back. Yeah, he, cause God's got a recompense. But the first part of he says, he said, if God is going to pay the sinner what he got coming to him, then he's going to pay the righteous what they got coming to them. He said, he said behold, the righteous going to be recompensed, and I love it again right here in the earth. For all of you got a problem with me driving a Mercedes. Well, what am I supposed to wait to heaven and drive a Mercedes? You don't need no Mercedes in heaven. We just going to, the song said we're going to walk around heaven all day. Did it say that? Ain't gonna be no Mercedes in heaven. We're gonna walk around heaven all day. Glory to God. No, righteous shall be recompensed in the earth. Now, now let me add this. The problem is if only preachers got Mercedes. That's a problem. Okay? But I believe what God does for me, He can do for you. And here's the everybody don't want a Mercedes. That's the truth. Everybody, you know, I love it. I, when I was with Pastor Baker in Virginia, he said something that blessed me. God will bless you according to your personality and your preferences. Oh, I love that. God will bless you according to your... See, what's a blessing to one person and a blessing to somebody else. Okay? God will bless you according to your personality. 
Okay? Some of y'all, you know, some of y'all love okra. Some people say, oh, okra, that's so nasty. That's just slimy. But if you, well, you love okra, God will give you all the okra you can take. <laughs> that verse from New Living Translation, Proverbs 11, 11, 31, if the righteous are rewarded here on earth, what will happen to wicked sinners? Proverbs 13, 22, I'm just about done here for today. A good man leaves an inheritance to who? His children's children. That's why I say if God wants to bless you enough to bless at least two more generations. Now, I know a lot of us, we're just trying to make it ourselves, but you're not blessed the way God wants you to be blessed until somebody else, the next generation, are blessed because you were here. That's the will of God. Now, y'all need to understand, when I first got a hold of these scriptures, I had nothing. I didn't have pot nor window. You fill in the blanks. But when I saw these things in the Word, I said, okay, God, that's what your Word says. I believe it. I receive it. Now, you got to make that happen in my life. Give me a plan to make it happen. Show me how to make it happen. And the most basic way to make it happen, y'all, is called insurance, or as we say down here down south, insurance. That's the most basic way to do that. You don't have to pray and speak in tongues. Get a ba 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 ba. Lord help me leave something next generation. Get a policy. And I keep telling y'all. I keep telling y'all, in this church, the way I preach and teach and stop even like I'm doing right now, for you to die without insurance policy in this church, I'm going to talk about you. They didn't do nothing I said. I told that trifling self. We got insurance agents all around this church. Then one come, well, uh, uh, well, my family, well, we wonder if you can, the church can give us some money. No! Somebody came to me one time, well, I don't believe in, I, I, I don't believe in cremation. Well, you should have had insurance policy. You must believe in cremation. You must believe in cremation. You have no insurance. Surely, you really didn't expect, uh, and y'all y- 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 know black folks, this is for, for this is for my, People understand. Y'all know, <laughs> y'all know, you can tell when folks, when black folks had insurance. Because we do just like the white folks. That funeral will happen this week. If they die today and they have it Friday, you say, child, you know they have some good insurance. Because when you have no insurance, we waiting for three weeks. The family arguing. You got something. Who got the family casket? <laughs> Y'all get that later. <laughs> well, we, 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 waiting, we waiting for so-and-so to get here from New York. They driving from Alaska. <laughs> nobody got no money. Can't nobody get nobody here. That should not be our case. And let me tell you something. Let me go deeper. Forget about the Mercedes if you don't have an insurance policy. Some of y'all, you're driving. You're driving what needs to be left to take care of you. Take care of, prepare your work in the field. Then the Bible says, afterward, build your house. Forget about bags. You don't even have insurance. All you're going to do is be a rolling stone. Boom, boom. Boom, 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 boom. All you left us was alone. You're supposed to leave a home, not alone, a home. Someone say, you preaching good, pastor. Good people leave inheritance to their children's children. So y'all, receiving, as I end this for today, receiving is built into the principle of giving. Receiving is an automatic, inherent response to giving. Planting good seeds and doing good deeds will be rewarded by God in the earth. We hear it all the time, Luke 6, 38. If you give, the rest is going to happen automatically. What's going to happen? It's going to be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be put or given into your bosom. And then he said, now, be careful. Mind how you give, because with the same measure that you use, it's going to be measured back to you. 
Little in, little out. Little giving, little receiving. Proverbs eleven twenty five. It's the generous soul, we read this earlier, that's going to be made rich. And if you water others, you'll be watered again yourself. Uh, that verse from God's Word, it says a generous person will be made rich, and whoever satisfies others will himself be satisfied. Let me end with this last point here. It's your turn to be blessed because God wants to resurrect your dreams. It's your turn to be, I need to catch this one. It's your turn to be blessed because God wants to resurrect your dreams. I'm talking to people here today who had dreams, but you let the dream die, and the dream died because it was killed by time. It was killed by disappointment. It was killed by negative words. Even if you had a dream that you've given up on, God can resurrect the dream. God resurrected the Sunamite's dream for a child. Ge uh, Gehazi, the, the prophet's servant, said, he's, he said, well, I, uh, what can I do for her? He said, I know what you can do. He said, she doesn't have a child, and her husband is old. She can't have a child, and her husband's too old to even help her to have a child. They're in a bad situation. Physically, this is over. Her dream, so she said, if this was going to happen, it would have happened 20 years ago. It would have happened 30 years ago. And so it wasn't that she couldn't have a child now. She had never had a child. That's why she didn't have an extra room on the house. Y'all catching this here. Even if your dream, have give, you've given up on it, God can resurrect it. Look at John 22, 24. It says, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. Some of you, are, you have a dream, and your dream is driving you crazy. I have a dream to be rich. I have a dream to be a millionaire. So you can't come to church because you just owe, you owe, you owe to off the work you go, and you're so proud that you're working three jobs. I feel sorry for you. God wants you to have a one and done. Everybody say one and done. God wants to bless you to have enough to live and enough to give. And all, all you young people talking about all these side hustles. How many sides you got? So sometimes your dream has to die and you got to let God resurrect it. In other words, you get to the point you're saying, God, I'm just going to do what you tell me to do. Now, if you don't make this happen, it's not going to happen. I'm not going to sacrifice who I am, sacrifice my marriage, sacrifice my children, going after a dream that I said you gave me, and in the pursuit of that dream, I'm losing everything. That is not the will of God for your life, because the blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich. It doesn't add sorrow with it or unnecessary toil. So that verse from the New Living Translation says, I tell you the truth, unless a kernel of wheat is planted in the soil and dies, it remains alone. But its death will produce many new kernels, a plentiful harvest of new, new lives. So as a young man in my 30s, the friends who I had started in ministry with, who were my peers, I'll never forget, one of them sang at my, sang at my wedding. And then last, I went back to New Jersey. Oh, he has a church, the church doing well. Another friend of mine, uh, he had started a church, and things, things are going, looked like it was going well for him. And then somebody else, they're doing this, they're traveling. When, when I met Bishop Page, Bishop Page, we were, we were in college. He was pledging my fraternity. Now, there's some things that happened to him. Let me tell you this while he ain't here, okay? Because he always saying I beat him. I wasn't a hazer. Okay, I didn't believe in it. Seriously, I'm very serious about this. Now, somebody did something to him, but it wasn't me. But somebody did something to him, so he always tell me about it. He beat my butt. He, I said, it's not true. Stop going around the country telling people that. Okay? He was about a year or two behind me in my, in my chapter. I met the next thing I know, we had just come here, and I'm getting ready to start a ministry, and I hear Bishop Page is preaching all around the world. And God, when are you going to do what you're going to do in my life? And I remember when I went back to Oklahoma after things didn't work out, got ready to move to New Jersey, the Lord said, just go back and resubmit yourself to your pastor. I went back to Oklahoma and told Pastor Carter, I said, I'll be here till Jesus come. Whatever God going to do with me is up to him to do it. And a month later, an opportunity opens up for me to come here. And I'm like, I can't go and tell my pastor that. I told him I'll be here till Jesus come, and Jesus hasn't come yet. 
But when I let my dream die and I stop trying to make moves to make it happen and say, God, my life is in your hand. My life is not my own to you. And I really submitted myself to him. He was able to resurrect the dream, watch this, in the place that he wanted the dream to live. God has a way of resurrecting their dreams. God resurrected Abraham and Sarah's dream of having a child. The Bible says in Genesis 18, Sarah was past the age of childbearing. And, and then Sarah herself said, this dream is over. In Genesis 18, 12, she said, after I've grown old, am I going to have pleasure? Am my Lord having pleasure with me? God resurrected Joseph's dream of being a leader and a preserver for his people. He had a dream that one day his brothers and sisters, even his mother and father, were going to be bowing down before him. And that, he had, that happened when he was a teenager. He was at the age of 30 before that dream came to pass. And now he is a prime minister over the nation of Egypt. And Genesis 42, 6 and 9, it says Joseph was the governor over the land and it was told, to, he, he sold to all the people. And Joseph's brothers came, watch this, and bowed down themselves before him with their faces to the earth. And drop down Genesis 42 and 9, it says, and Joseph remembered the dreams. He remembered God resurrected the dreams. Listen, between that time and the dream being fulfilled, he had been to prison. I'm sure the dream died. Between that time, he had been a slave in Potiphar's house, and his wife lied on him. He spent years in a dungeon in prison, but God knew how to resurrect the dream. I'm here to tell you today, God's about to resurrect some dreams. I know it seems like it's too late. I know it seems like it's too old. I know it seems like surely it can't happen now. I know you've given up on it now, but God told me to tell you, it's your turn to be blessed, and he's about to resurrect your dream. Just like he resurrected Abraham and Sarah's dream. Just like he resurrected Joseph's dream. So even, even when it doesn't matter to you, it still matters to God. But you still got to, it still matters to God. That's why Galatians 6 and 7 says, be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, that will he reap. Listen to that from the message translation. Don't be misled. No one makes a fool of God. If God said, I'm going to bless you, I'm going to bless you. If God said, you're going to be recompensing the earth before you die, it got to be seen. I know the devil telling me he's going to take you out, but you got to tell that devil, I'm going to live to see it happen. Look at somebody say, I'm going to live to see it happen. My God, don't be misled. God's word translated said, make no mistake about it. You cannot make a fool of God. If God said it, he will perform it. If he spoke it, he's got to make it good. Even he could swear by nobody else. He said, in blessing, I'll bless you. In multiplying, I'll multiply you. God, how you gonna bless me? Stop trying to figure it out. Just walk with me. Just keep living for me. Just keep doing right. Don't compare yourself to other people. Don't get mad at other people on social media. i got a way to bless you. And when I take you on the path that I have for you, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, it have not entered the heart of man. The things God has in store for you. But when it's your turn to be blessed, it's your turn to be blessed. If God got to move somebody from the front of the line to the back of the line, it's your turn to be blessed. It's your turn to be blessed. He said, I'll make crooked places straight before you. The last will be first, and the first will be last. God told me to tell somebody, stop looking at who's in front of you. Just recognize that when it's my turn, it's my turn. Nobody can stop it. Nobody can block it. It doesn't matter where I came from. It doesn't matter my education. It doesn't matter what other people say about me. When it's my turn to be blessed, I'm going to be blessed. I will be the head and not the tail. I will be above and not beneath. It's my turn. You can look at me. You can laugh at me. You can talk about me. But it's my turn, Coco. Coco Golf said yesterday, it's my turn. It may look like I'm about to lose, 
but you're not going to take this from me. God didn't bring me this far to just bring me this far. It's my turn. I got to dig in. I got to hold on. I got to keep the faith. God promised that he will bless me. God promised that he will elevate me. God promised that he will increase me. Somebody shout, it's my turn. It's my turn. It's my turn. I know you don't understand it, but it's my turn. Well, where he come from? It's my turn. Where she come from? It's my turn. How did they get that job? It's my turn. Who knew them? It's my turn. Who gave them the hookup? It's my turn. When God said it's your turn, he'll move him and her. He'll take one down and he'll put you up. He'll take one out. He'll put you in. When it's your turn, the devil will be mad. When it's your turn, the angels will be rejoicing. It's your turn to be blessed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, it's my turn, laugh at me, but it's my turn, be jealous of me, but it's my turn, talk about me, but it's my turn, I don't have to explain to anybody, I don't have to justify to anybody, it's my turn to be blessed, what can I do for you, God said. You've been faithful. What can I do for you? This is your season to name your request. This is your season to ask the hard thing. This is your season for the big ask. God's trouble in the water. God's trouble in the water. You need to jump in. While the favor waters are being troubled. Jump in while the bubbles are blowing in the blessing river. Jump in in this favor time. Ask for rain. Ask for rain. Ask for rain. In the time of rain, it's your turn to be blessed. You won't have to explain it to nobody. Cause you can't explain it yourself all I know I was there but God put me there I was over there but God brought me in here it was my turn to be blessed no I didn't come up through the ranks God just put me on top no I didn't come up to the system God blessed me outside the system because it was my turn to be blessed. It was my turn to be blessed. Well, do you have a degree? No, I don't have a degree. It was just my turn to be blessed. Well, did you know them before? No, I didn't know them before. But I know a God who sits high and he looks down low. And when it's your turn, it's your turn. It's your turn, it's your turn to be blessed. It's your turn to praise. It's your turn to dance. It's your turn to sow. It's your turn to reap. It's your turn.